Apple Intelligence, or AI, was the headlining feature for this year's September event. But despite it being announced at WWDC earlier this summer, there's still no timeline for when Apple Intelligence is going to be released. So if Apple didn't announce that, what did they announce? Well, very good question. First off, starting with the watches. So there's a new Series 10 of Apple watches that have a slightly bigger display, a slightly thinner body, um, and also integrate some cool new health tech. Um, so along with the Series 9, there is sleep apnea detection, which is pretty cool. For example, my grandma um, has sleep apnea. Knowing that it's something that runs in the family, having a sensor that detects, uh, that would be pretty cool. So that plus some software updates, it's a relatively incremental upgrade for the Apple Watches, um, which is less so to be said about the AirPods that they announced. So the AirPods 4 are now the first headphones, to my knowledge, in the world um, to have active noise cancelling without silicone ear tips. So this is a big deal because, you know, regular headphones rely on these ear tips to block out the outside world and make it much easier to, well, actively noise, ca noise cancel. Yeah, in addition to that, they moved a lot of their lineup to USB-C and really cool, um, actually one of the coolest things of the whole event is that the AirPods Pro 2 are now able to act as a medical grade hearing aid. Especially for my grandma, she doesn't want to be the kind of person who wears hearing aids. Um, so being able to have her just wear AirPods, which have less stigma attached to it, and having a conversation with her, that's really cool. You can also apparently now nod or shake your head to respond to Siri, um, though that remains to be seen how reliable it'll be. But speaking of reliable, what is reliable in a September event but iPhones? So let's go on to describe the headliner new feature in terms of hardware for this year was the camera capture button, which is basically this little back button or trackpad on the side of the phones that allow you to open up a camera, take photos, record videos. You can double tap it lightly um, to adjust the zoom or the exposure or other kinds of settings as they demonstrated in their videos. In addition to that, all models of iPhone 16 receive the action button that previously was exclusive to the iPhone 15 Pro. Yeah, it's definitely more exciting to have that um, camera capture button in the right spot. So it's right around here where most right-handed people tend to hold their phones. So you can take photos like this, or you can take photos like this. It's pretty intuitive, and that's definitely the most exciting feature that we've seen. So for the iPhone 16, there's a slightly larger screen, and they've moved the cameras around so that it's more of a pill shape in the back. They say that it's to capture spatial video for the Apple Vision Pro, which is definitely a very relevant product, and given that they've mentioned it twice in the two-hour presentation. In addition to that, there's a new processor, which is around 15 to 40% faster than the one in the last phone, and more efficient, more battery, though they didn't really tell how much more battery life it would be. So overall, incremental upgrades, but still good news. Um, moving on to the iPhone 16 Pro, there's some upgrades to the camera for both models, an upgraded ultra-wide um, ultra wide camera for 48 megapixels. You have some faster Wi-Fi, you have faster processors, but overall a relatively unexciting year apart from the camera capture button. Don't get me wrong, the iPhone is still quite compelling as a phone, but you know, this upgrade is not particularly exciting. What Apple presented in terms of what is Apple intelligence was rehashed from WWDC um, with some slight changes to messaging that they've realized during the course of the summer they needed to change or to expand on, but that really didn't give us a lot of extra information that we didn't know or extra reassurance that these features are actually going to be coming because, you know, a lot of these are said to be coming beta next month or releasing next year, but then, you know, all of this is being used to sell these phones, but none of this is actually available yet. So as always, make sure that you're careful when you're buying something, but you're always buying it for what it is now instead of future promises. And if you're up for 
more coverage of events almost live as it happens, well, make sure you follow, and since it's rather late, I've got to stop recording, go edits, and crash into bed as soon as I can. Until next time, take care.